Welcome everyone to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the last day of August 2024. And around the table we got Kevin Martin, Serve Lemur, Stefan Merle, and myself, Damien Duportal. It's not uh, August, Mar it's March. Uh, uh, it's April. April. So sorry. Hello everyone, it's the last day of <laughs> April 2024. <laughs> okay. Hopefully it's not live. Um, let's get started with the announcements. Uh, weekly release. I haven't checked, so let's go on Jenkins.io. Do we have packages? The changelog is there, so thanks. <laughs> That's uh, at least someone uh, had time to perform the work. I see everything went well because we have the new version available on Jenkins.io. So our own packages are out. I haven't checked for the Docker image. I believe there is a Docker. Ah, oh, there's a Docker link. I believe that will send us to the Docker Hub. Let's look all together. Live. Please don't do this at home. Yes, it's out. Image is out. So that means, Stefan, you are ready to roll for Infra CI as soon as possible or Thursday. Um, Quick reminder that May 1, 8, and 9 are off in most of European countries. So sometimes it's the free, sometimes it's only one and eight, sometimes only eight. It depends because we have a mix of uh, um, days off due to the end of First World War, Second World War, and I don't remember the nine. Is it a Catholic uh, thing? So it's a mix of depend on the countries, which mean expect uh, lower availability as usual. That's the message. Anything else? Okay, um, I'm not sure if announcement is the best place just to be sure. So Mark asked us to put on top of the priorities for the upcoming milestone, maybe not immediately this one, but uh, uh, docsjenkins.io is back to priority list uh, because uh, the GSOC project start to be slowed down by, uh, uh, by this. They need uh, to put in place the first step of the initial proof of concept. Uh, and there is uh, an issue opened by Badil about uh, the uh, the JenkinsWar.sc, so the GPG uh, cryptography signature of the binary, which are pushed to Artifactory but not to the Get Jenkins IO mirrors. Uh, that has that issue has been open opened by Basil and Mark is taking it. That will be uh, changes on the packaging process of the core releases. So we indicated to Mark. Uh, uh, where to look at, and it took it over, so we'll add it to the milestone, and Mark takes care of this one. Uh, I believe it's not worth the announcement, because these are two actionable issues, so we'll put them on the new milestone, and that should be good. Okay, for everyone? Any question on the announcement or other announcements? Nope, okay. So next weekly will happen next week. I'm not at ease with the calendar this time. Uh, that will be 7 or 6 May. Is that correct? I don't remember. No, I think 7. Um, next weekly. I don't remember. Seven. So we look from last, last team meeting because I'm cheating. <laughs> Okay, so it will be 15 May, so in two weeks, and Alex Brandes is release lead, which means early morning starting, so end of European Paris time morning, and early morning for the US uh, for the, the release. Any, que some, any additional questions? Okay, do we have incoming advisories? Oh, one has been announced five hours ago. Thursday, May 2, plugins and I. <laughs> 16, okay. So Thursday, please don't break the infrastructure and update the plugin as soon as possible when it's available. 
Yeah, uh, tomorrow, the May one is usually we do advisories like LTS on Wednesday, but it's days of tomorrow. Thursday to May. So please, Thursday, don't forget about this, folks. We will need Trusted CI to be able to update Jenkins.io for the advisory. I won't be um, there. Oh, you're off Thursday? And uh, you're off tonight? That's your last tonight, day of work? Yeah. Tomorrow and Thursday, I'm off. I'm going coming back on Friday and okay. Monday, and then I'm off for the rest of the week. OK. Ray, I don't remember, and I don't have the calendar of my eyes. Uh, next week, I'm not out. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so it means, Stefan, you only have, you have Friday and Monday. So you have two days for the upcoming milestone. So not a lot of tasks for you to be able. And Hervé, like me, you have uh, tomorrow off but you are there Thursday, Friday, and Monday, and Tuesday next week. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Should be almost full uh, milestone for us. Okay, cool. Um, hmm. Oh, no, I have an announcement. Sorry. So thanks, Stefan. So that means uh, advisory uh, Thursday. Uh, Hervé, we have to be careful uh, Thursday. Um, Microsoft credits sponsored account. We have a sponsorship thanks to Microsoft on a secondary sponsored account. Uh, I still need to check the billings, but uh, we have around free uh, 30K still available. And we had an end date of end of May, which could have been worrying because that mean May would have been uh, moving back CI and its workload somewhere else. Um, uh, see, um, the expiration of credits has been moved to end of August, which is good. That let us a few months to consume these credits. One uh, proposal I made to Mark that has been reported to the board yesterday and has been validated on at least on the principle that might shift slightly our priorities. Um, our goal is to consume these credits before they expire. That looks a good goal. Considering both AWS sponsor credits and Digital Ocean sponsors uh, are ending end of January 2025, that means it's way more important to consume first the Microsoft credits first and then switch back to AWS or Digital Ocean or spread on both. Then after January 2025, we don't know. Most probably if Digital Ocean doesn't have too much turnover on their money, they might renew. Uh, AWS, we don't know, but it's the first time. So the probability of course of renewal is lower. We should know in June for AWS. Mark applied for the new credits. We will know in June. So until then, now that uh, thanks to more communication with Microsoft and CDF, we know that we have to consume until August. Hence my proposal, instead of moving the EKS cluster where we run builds for CI Jenkins IO from CloudBees AWS to the new AWS credits, we change to moving that to the sponsor, that means creating an Azure Kubernetes cluster, at least for CI Jenkins IO, and eventually the second we mentioned and we posed for infra CI agents. And we will start to eat here because that's a lot of credits. Advantage for us, we keep the initial goal of moving away as much infrastructure as possible from CloudBees accounts. Second case for us, we can go more on the IRM64 and Windows uh, agents for CI Jenkins IO, but in pod. And third, we try to consume all of these credits as much as possible. So eventually we can try to renegotiate with Microsoft. That let us until uh, the whole summer 
to start using AWS for ephemeral workloads with the 60K credits that we will have that will spin up since September until end of January, so six, seven months. We can consume this credit in seven months, trust me. Yeah. What do you think about that proposal? I didn't have time to to validate with you. I'm sorry for this one, but it was like, kind of, oh, let's let's go. Otherwise, we would have too much conflicting priorities. No, it's good. Okay, cool. So we will adapt all of our uh, internal goals for that. But yeah, the idea is to focus on this one. That means the new ci.jenkins.io-agent cluster have to be created on Azure instead of AWS for now. Uh, given the priorities, uh, I don't know who can take this one, typically all of us, but yeah, that will be a, a slight shift in priorities. Is it clear or is there any question on this one? Okay, uh, priorities shift, move. to AKS instead of the new rest account. Okay, back to the task we were able to finish. And then we will see with the work in progress. Uh, delete account and update the default assignee for Atlassian Jira Software Cloud plugin. So we had a user whom, which account has been removed uh, two years ago. Um, they realized that they were still receiving notification on Jira because when we had the spammer, uh, I think it was uh, spring, uh, last year, end of last year, we had to restore a Jira database. And I don't know how, but it ended uh, restoring their account on Jira, at least the email, and restoring the fact that they were the default lead for a given plugin in the components of Jenkins project. So that has been fixed. No login has been done. Their account was still deleted and no way for them to connect to, to, to Jira because their account is deleted. But uh, I've changed their email internally in Jira and removed them as a lead maintainer. So they won't receive notification and someone will receive the notification for this plugin. Uh, we had a lot of account issues. So someone did not receive the email. So checking on Mailgun and they were bounced emails because they most probably created the account uh, and the email during the same hour time window, but they had to validate the email before it was opened on the, SM on the receiving server. So the email was marked as no email account initially. But then the email was spin up and we were able to exchange with them to confirm their identity. So we just removed the bouncing on our side and everything went well. Uh, deletion of spam user. Again, email not received. In that case, the email was sent. So not our problem. They had to contact their email administrator. Spam, spam, account issue. Yeah, that's a lot of issues. Uh, and we had issues in infra CI. Uh, the Docker inbound agents were failing due to the, the tool we use for testing the container. It was failing on Windows uh, because the recent change uh, required to specify explicitly the platform you want for the Docker image. Otherwise, the default is Linux AMD64. And when testing on Windows, clearly it complains. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I have. I expect uh, Linux, but you are uh, giving me Windows. Yeah, not, not working. That was the root cause. A few changes uh, after this one that allowed us to provide GDK updates and cleaning up that repository. The initial proposal on using GOS wasn't valid, technically speaking. Reason is that we will need to build a tooling on Windows that spin up the container install GOS in the container, in the running container, copy the GOS uh, test harness files inside the container and run the GOS command inside the con container. That's a lot of work. And I thought it could be easily done by DGOS, which is a wrapper around GOS and Docker run commands, but DGOS only work on uh, Linux and not on Windows. So right now we need to build our tool or contribute to DGOS to replace that for container testing. 
That's the equivalent of what Stefan built on Packer image, where we copy, we ensure that GOS is installed, we copy the files, and we run the command at the end of the provisioning. And finally, support for Visual Studio in Windows container image. Uh, we provided that for 2019, and now it's a matter of using 2022. So we thanks, didn't. Alex. We got help. We is community side, and I was, I I was going to say thanks, Alex. So and Stephen, thank you. But that works, so that's cool. Good, good point. Any question? Okay, so work in progress. Let's get started with Update Center because that's the most important one today. Uh, Hervé, your turn. Um, let me open the issue to follow what I uh, described. Um, the main progress is the separation of uh, HTTPD and Mirobit services. So they have their own file share. So we can uh, use um, uh, azure.update.jenkins.io uh, uh, to send request, uh, the request hiring on this URL are redirected by Apache with the existing HTTP access, HT access uh, generated by the update center to publish.sh script. With the addition of uh, a fallback uh, redirection to a new host, mirror.updates.jenkins.io, um, managed by Mirobits. So we, the goal here is to avoid serving any file from Apache and delegating all bandwidth to Cloudflare. To do that, uh, I've got a pull request open to disable uh, HTTPD uh, service from the Mirobit parent release we are currently have. And uh, I added a new HTTPD release uh, with its own file share and its own ingress too, because now, uh, since we uh, we have to have separate file share, and since it was the only common uh, point between HTTPD and Mirobit in uh, Mirobit parent, it doesn't make sense anymore to use Mirobit parent to deploy it. We're keeping async and Mirobit under this umbrella uh, parent chart as they share the same file share. Right. So another work in progress is using dedicated uh, source folder on file share in the publish uh, .sh script from update center release, update center two. Uh, creating the uh, folder containing only the HT access files uh, for HTTPD service and volume. And the other file uh, only for Mirobits without any extra access file. Nice. So that means uh, uh, we're almost there uh, for going back to the performance testing because that might change the topology of the response since we have way more redirects than we used to have now and way less files to serve. So the response may be even better than it used to be with initial implementation. So that's that good direction. Is it clear for you, Stefan, Kevin? Any question, clarification? Yes, and very good work because uh, that everything is going from that test, that stress test, and you, you found out all the bad uh, redirecting and everything. So very good job. Thanks. Any question? Anything to add? Okay. Nope. So 
a word on the what used to be the next priority that will be decreased. Migrate CI Jenkins IOKS cluster from CloudBiz AWS account to Jenkins AWS sponsored accounts. So um, done. Uh, AWS admin setup in Terraform state. We validated that with uh, Stefan. Um, whip destination to be updated to AKS. See announcement. So here we need to update the issue, if it's okay for everyone, both titles and definition to explain that the new target, still the same source, still the same goal, not having CloudBees pay for that and open the access, except that in that case, that will be on AKS so we can consume the credits. Uh, and to do create cluster, uh, create to-do list, uh, operational to-do list. Um, to do as well, AWS add Hervé and Mark as AWS admin in Terraform state. So any of us can take over during the summer. The goal is still we can at least finish the access for you. We don't create the Terraform technical user and I've stopped working on that part given the priority shift. However, uh, we need to have AWS a sponsored account to be configured for everyone in the team. We only validated that Stefan had a viable accounts. So Stefan, is it okay for you if you are the person creating the accounts for Hervé and Mark and verify with Hervé probably Friday that uh, he can set up his account like I did with you. So we are sure I'm not the bus factor here. I will try to remember everything, but yes. Stefan, do this so Damien is not the bus factor. Is that okay for you, Hervé, Friday, uh, Friday? Just verify with Stefan. So the two of you allocate one hour of your schedule during the day when it meets your uh, your availabilities. And Stefan goes on that part. And Stefan, I will add uh, details on what to do, but that should be quite straightforward. It's a local.tf and something to apply. Yes. Uh, regarding creating the AKS cluster, um, if it's okay for everyone, I will get started, but I will need, uh, uh, based on your availabilities, one of you to review it. I don't mind doing that in pair. I propose since I was already assigned to that issue to continue having this, I might need to hand over some parts to you folks though. Creating the cluster in itself is easy. The CI Jenkins IO part, it will depend on uh, how much of the task we have. Is that okay for everyone here? Yes. Um, oh no, there is one technical requirement here. Oh, Need Azure, it's the subscription. The... You are the only one to uh, have access? No. Oh, that's that's not a problem because we can use Terraform and Terraform has the access. Now the problem, we have to study and see how to manage today CI Jenkins IO archives and stash artifacts in Amazon S3. So you have an agent that say archive artifacts. Whether the agent is running on Azure, Digital Ocean or AWS, everything is sent to an S3 bucket in AWS in the paid account. So we can move immediately the cluster, but that means the the BOM builds and every plugin builds running on AWS will be slower because we will have to send the data from Azure to AWS. And we will pay the bandwidth. And we will have to pay for that bandwidth, which is quite a lot with the BOM builds, which means we need to find a way. Um, the solutions are back to ci.g hard drive for archiving artifacts. That's the first step. We accept that we need a bigger uh, data disk with more IOPS, and we just store the artifact on CI Jenkins IO. So at least since we move most of the workloads to Azure, the costs are inside, and only digital OSN agent will have, which is already the case today. 
and we don't pay for inbound bandwidth. So we don't pay when the data is sent from digital ocean agents to Azure. There is no cost incurred for this one. And or we use Azure, uh, I think it's blob storage. There is a plugin that does the same on Azure. We install it and removed it initially on CI Jenkins IO. We, we never fully configure it, but that does the same. But instead of Azure, it use, uh, instead of AWS, it uses Azure. So we need to create a file storage like the one mentioned by RV. And we need to create a key and set up the key on CIG credentials. Um, I believe going back to the first one will be the solution. But yeah, that's, we need a quick study to see the cost differences. OK, for everyone, is there any okay. question, clarification? OK. Um, what did we add? A release of Jenkins container. Oh, OK. Uh, the HTTP 429 should be closed. I forgot to close it. Let me double check. We don't have any more problem. And I said last week I had to close it. So one issue, I move it to the closed part and I will take care. I need to clean up everything here. Sorry. You can you can also move the renew as your AD password before expiration for uh, sponsorship CI. Absolutely. Oh, what a mess I am this week. Let, let me Energy. close the issue during that time. No worries. I, I will take care after the meeting. Um, <laughs> Stefan, yes. you worked on migrating storage for some controllers. Um, yes, I did create for the, the I, I forgot if it was last week or this week, but I did create the new uh, storage class standard uh, ZRS. It's created on both uh, private K8As and, and public K8As. So now we can use them. And uh, I started yesterday to uh, uh, look around to uh, understand how um, I can set up the PV, PVC slash disk or just the PVC to um, create from Terraform the what we need to run the and to migrate the the weekly. Yeah, I remember some messages and Fred didn't have time yeah, to we check. We didn't have time to, okay. to to talk about that, but I I I feel but I need more 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 digging that in fact we we just need a PVC and that it will be handled by the, the Terraform mm -hmm. plugin of uh, Kubernetes. Because if not, I, I, I found ways to create first the disk using the uh, Azure provider, then the PV and PVC using the Kubernetes provider and put it to handle uh, everywhere. But it seems that you, you can use only the PVC telling him exactly which kind of uh, storage class you want to use and um, and it can handle everything. So I feel like it's better. At first sight, that looked really good because the only thing you have is uh, using the storage class uh, export attribute to specify the storage class you want for the PVC. And mm -hmm. that should be good. And since it's retained, that means if we destroy PVC on Terraform, we can still have the disk. Yes. But that means the disks are not cleaned up. That's the only downside I see. But for me, it's way more easier and uh, to manage than the other way around. I feel like it too. But I was at the at the moment where I needed to to try, and I want to make sure where to try and how to try. Mm -hmm. At first sight, PVC is okay. Uh, do you have any ideas, or did it? Did you have time to look at it, Ravi? Or is it out completely outside your scope right now and you don't know and no problem? It's just, just I asking. Know, you know. I haven't uh, looked at it. Yeah, but most of the thing is asking me how out of my bandwidth, so that's fine for you. Yeah, that, that's fine. It's just, just in yeah. case you had an advice or question or so. It's because we, we discussed a bit PVC uh, earlier today with Hervé, that's why I was mentioning that. Okay. My proposal is uh, for you to focus on PVC managed by Terraform. 
Uh, and then we will take care of cleaning up a uh, disk by hand when we need, because it's not an operation that we do that often. And yeah, that should be okay for me. Yeah, and I feel it's it's more secure to have that that way, mm -hmm. because it it means deleting by hand, so it's more secure for volumes for this. Yep. yep. Good. Agreed. So we are safe around this deletion thanks to retain. Any question? Okay, top level topic, GDK patch campaign. So the issue is not fully updated, but we are almost there. Uh, Packer image has updated um, GDKs, uh, Windows container. So all of our agents has a GDK. All tools has been updated, that, that was the first one. Some uh, Jenkins tools update on updates on infra CI Jenkins IO had to be fixed. Uh, we had a contributor who never answered back from you our suggestion. We tried to, to fix the update CLI uh, manifest. So I tried to reapply the work from uh, both uh, Stefan and Hervé around uh, using the Adoptium API. Uh, and that worked pretty well for infra CI. That could be a bit more complicated for CI Jenkins Ion puppets if we had to do this. But in the case of Infra CI, we are well, way less cases in the matrix. We only use Linux Intel, Windows Intel, and Linux ARM. Only three cases. These three cases are really common. And no weird behavior from Adoptium API on that area for these three. No bad surprises. So yeah, and it went well and updated the tools. I believe weekly release will have all the new GDKs this week. Uh, and the rest will be LTS image in two weeks. On the agent side, I saw a lot of pair being merged during the past day survey. Is that correct? I don't know if we have released the agents or not on the official Jenkins agent images. You're muted, Ervi. I don't think so. I know for sure that Docker SSH agent hasn't been released while uh, almost uh, almost or all GTK updates has been have been merged. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't think I haven't seen any Docker agent release. Okay, I propose that we trigger this week uh, new releases as soon as possible with the GDK updates, given they fix uh, a lot of issues. Yep. And for us, that we will have to build some DOM string images, such as Docker Packaging and Docker Web Builder, but maybe others. I propose also that we close the issue once the agents' releases have been updated, so Packaging and Web Builder. And I propose that we don't take the controller images in account in the scope. It's written and we write it explicitly. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. Once all agents are updated, but not... Any question on GDK updates? Okay. Hervé, can I ask you to give us a summary because it looks like you did something on the... Uh, no, it's not this one. It's discrepancy in plugin release date. Is it... Yeah. Um, Kevin uh, uh, suggested that Algolia secret and credential were uh, skipped since uh, the unification of Jenkins files in plugin site repository. Uh, but it's not related since this merge uh, is from four and a half year, uh, months ago, while the error is from three months ago. I went to Algolia dashboard and checked. Uh, or current uh, credential for Algolia. 
Ok. I don't understand why, but the search APK and the write APK have changed. Ok. Uh, not the same. That's the one we have in our secret, Infra CI secrets. Uh, it's the same application ID, but not the same key. So I've updated them, triggered the new plugin site build, and purge uh, its cache. But I, I haven't seen any change yet. I don't know if there is speci uh, something specific to do to on Arcolia side to to trigger a new indexing. I, I don't know. Okay, the the page we see here, okay, it's dynamically the page is filled the client side dynamically once yeah. we receive. So I believe the JSON everything from is, Algolia is three months, right? Yeah, everything is uh, client side. The okay. API search key is passed in clear mm -hmm. in the front side. It's yes, of course. Uh, it's yeah. done for that, but. Uh, I don't know where the right APK is used. I would need to dig in plug inside code to answer that. Okay. Okay. Thanks I'm for the waiting update. for Kevin mm -hmm. response if he remember anything about that. Okay. Algolia API keys uh, uh, updated and working but no change despite rebuilding the caching. We need to uh, deep dive on Algolia. Right to key see usage, yeah. Where the right key is used. Is good, and if the proper key is used either, okay. I so don't I... know. Also, maybe there are, there is a specific change in plugin site uh, dating from the twenty eighth of February, but yeah, I haven't looked at it more than that. Okay, so that require analysis and deep dive on plugin site. Um, is that okay? Uh, how do you want to manage this given the priorities are very okay to keep focusing uh, on yeah. updates? Um, yes, I, uh, I would have put this issue on the milestone, but in no priority. Okay. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. And I propose we don't uh, assign either you or someone else. We, we wait for Gavin to give us a feedback. If we have time, we can spend on it once we have an answer. Otherwise, we will keep it stale until next milestone. Is that okay for you? Yes. If you want to spend some time at any given, because whatever reason, don't forget to assign it yourself so it will mark that you are working on it. And if you stop working on uh, it, do the same. I'm already assigned on it, this one. Okay, so let's remove you then. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, Thank cool, you. thanks. Thanks for the explanation, no question. Okay, um, a road about the mirrors. Uh, where am I? Okay, uh, I didn't have time to spend on FTP credential. Uh, sorry for that unplanned, uh, unplanned meeting. Um, so Ostico still on Damien for testing FTP credential. Because I'm lying, uh, I spinned up an empty uh, local K3D, but it stopped on my machine, and I just need to test it. But uh, yeah. that's one hour work. I am unblocked with my local test too, so I so if you don't have any. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure I understand. So you want to take it over, or as, is... as you want? But if you wouldn't have time, and that I've got some, I can I can look too, but. Okay, so then I, I don't mind uh, you taking time on this one if it's okay for you. Yeah. Okay, back to Hervé. No news from them. Let's keep it 
stale in next milestone. Okay for you? Yes. Okay for you, Stefan? Yes, of course. Plugin health JSON sometimes missing. Okay, so that one is funny. I had plenty of help with, uh, from Adrian. Um, I need to update the issue, but the takeaway is that the plugin, the Jenkins file for that uh, application should work as expected. As you can see on my screen, you have a variable that is set up at zero. Oh, I'm having a call. I'm sorry, I need to stop two minutes. And we cannot take over because we have no clue of what you want to say, except that report line is tested. Oh, I'm back, sorry. Oh, you're fast. Okay, so the idea is to have a default of zero line. And of course, the variable um, should be filled with the amount of line returned by uh, uh, that shell command, which basically count the amount of line on the report file generated by uh, the previous step. Uh, clean it up, trim it from spaces and stuff. And either it's zero or it's a bigger number. And based on that, you only publish it if it's not empty. Uh, given the way it's generated, you have either zero or only one line because the, G, the JSON output has been compressed. But a set of funny conditions on how Jenkins declarative pipeline are compiled to scripted pipeline and executed as pseudo groovy pipelines. Uh, we were eating a case where even if report lines was, uh, even if the file was empty, meaning zero line, somehow the conditions here did not work because this was dynamically set, oh, it's a string. And that string has a size bigger than zero, so let's publish that. Yes, welcome to the magical world of dynamically typed <laughs> languages. Yeah, but, but report lines is a string. I mean, just add codes and it's yeah, a string. Yeah, <laughs> implicit types conversion that get me started. So we are working on that. Most probably, uh, since it's weird and hard to document properly, um, our idea was initially to A, Let's go on a full scripted pipeline. It should work as expected, first one, uh, with e explicit casting. Otherwise, the idea that we discussed with Hervé a bit is finding solution to say, OK, we might have that step that could fail visually without failing the pipeline. And then we went on, hey, do we want the pipeline to fail sometimes and sometimes be green when it publish? Or do we visually have observability for this one? So um, as far as I remember, the last proposal was, hey, uh, let's use scripted as a short-term solution. And Hervé proposed the, to update the publish report pipeline library to have an additional parameters when enabled, so by default false, but when enabled, and we could enable it here to avoid impacting other usages across the infrastructure, that parameter would fail if and only if the published files are empty files, it's really easy to check. So that could be a way to have a safeguard inside the, the library. So I need to update the issue with all of this knowledge, but yeah, these are the directions because it's, yeah, it's quite often breaking the generation of the plugin sites, slowing down publication or at least the publication of the site. I can add a uh, suburb about the publish report updates. Um, propose something about it if you want. Okay. Done issue with variable in pipeline. So again, don't do something smart in pipeline. You will be beaten by that, most probably. Uh, to do short term, use scripted pipeline. Uh, to do proper fix. Update, publish. Yes, if you're interested, uh, I let you go ahead on the proper fix survey. Is that OK? Yes. Publish report library. So Damien, to add a parameter to fail 
when empty files. But that one is low priority. But yeah, don't say to use it to, to work on it. Right? Anything else? OK. Um, we had an issue that I propose we close as uh, no work to be done, if no one objects. Thanks, Hervé, for handling. So we had a user with, let's say, a laconic report that say, hey, I got the link. It's not working. Good. Uh, thanks, Hervé. You asked the right question. The answer yeah, is where? Yeah, I think it's probably their own instance behind a VPN or something like that. Absolutely. It's been five days, so I propose that we close it as uh, not planned. Any objection? Yeah. No. I propose to take care of closing it with a message, so if they are mad, you will be the, bad, the good cop and you will be able to help them while I will be the person they despise. Is that okay for everyone? <laughs> You like to be the pleasure. bad guy, so okay. Yeah, today, today I'm grumpy, so I prefer being the bad cop. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Artifactory, nothing done. I need to send an email, Damien late. Damien late, email to send and remove from milestone. So I'm passing on this one. Uh, we had a set of new issues. Uh, we have build stuck some time to time on uh, infra CI waiting for the GDK 17 label. Uh, Hervé added some context or at least a link. Uh, looks like we have a pull request uh, that finalized the merge of both Jenkins files because in fact we changed the um, the multi-branch pipeline on infra CI to use Gen the same Jenkins file as CI Jenkins IO, but we never made the adjustments, the, the changes on that Jenkins file. So right now it's trying to run a pipeline designed for CIG and not for infra CI and the GDK 17. As uh, explained by Stefan a few weeks ago, given using uh, the default container, which has GDK 17, we had issue given the amount of memory. So spinning up a virtual machine for the agent looks like way better in that case, because plenty of memory and CPU and not much that cost. So that's the goal. We haven't checked yet. Looks like it's still failing. So we need to check why is it failing and continue on that topic. Um, at the same time, I propose that we roll back the configuration so infra CI keeps using the old Jenkins file gates until it's merged. Is that okay for you, Hervé? Is that okay if I take care of this one since you have a few others? Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay. Um, Damien takes it. Uh, and we have build of Kubernetes management randomly failing. It's improving. Uh, I need a bit more analysis. So we had failure due to network issues. Uh, I, what is my keyboard doing? Okay, I'm having issues, sorry. Sorry, folks. Uh, since a few days, we had a lot of uh, failing, uh, as you can see, builds on Kubernetes management because it was accidentally trying to run on uh, virtual machine agents, which have the right tooling, but they are not on the proper network. So they were failing to get the encryption key to decode from the vault. Because the container right now are running inside a private cluster, which is allowed to reach the vault, but the virtual machine are running on a subnet in the subscription. That's because they have the same label? Yes. Ah, got it. So I run a two hotfix just to unblock forcing container by adding the prefix GNLP. Looks like it did the job, but I saw a few failures of some pull requests this morning. I believe they might be related, as you can see, but just really rare now. So the, the problem is globally not critical anymore. It was last Friday. Uh, just need to check the network is not outbound again. If but, no uh, object, yep, go ahead. Infra CI is in error right now. 
provide. It's it's upgrading. Okay. So, sorry, I didn't want to tell in the in the room, but it's upgrading. Okay, sorry, yeah, I didn't saw you. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the infra. So since it's it's in the areas of uh, network and stuff, uh, I recently worked on it, and we have chocolatey incoming issue on the next milestone. So I propose that we. Um, uh, yep. I propose to continue working on it. I don't mind if someone else wants to work on it, but yeah, given the availabilities, yeah, most probably I will work on it. Um, as uh, requested by Mark, uh, Docs Jenkins IO Hervé, uh, do you think you can spend a bit of time on this one? Do you need help? Yeah. Uh... You previously required, required that I write a uh, full handbook. Uh, yes, that was when we had a lot of time, but yeah, it's yeah. some more. Can I delay this writing? Uh, you... Not before creating resources. Yeah, I, I, I tend to put a detailed plan like I've made for contributors to Jenkins.io. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will be a good intermediate. Uh, whether you write it on a runbook or here is the same. It's a markdown plan. The goal is to have a written way of explaining what are you yeah. going to do. Whether on the issue yeah. or runbooks, it's okay. Yeah. But yeah, no incoming pull request before a plan. That's the rule we have to apply. No problem. Cool. I'm there if you need help uh, because since it's a prior topic, we need to work uh, on it as a team. So if you need any help and need any question, yeah. I will prioritize on this one. Okay. Um, Harvey writes down task list in the issue instead of full run book. Um, priority to unblock Chris on GSOC. Project. Good for you? Yes. Uh, what other issue do I need to move? Triage. So GDK 17 won't have any more triage. Um, Packer image. So this one is related to the, um, the failure on Kubernetes management. It's related to the network for infra CI agents. So I'm assigning and I will. I do. Uh, I will kill two birds with with one stone for this one. The idea is to add uh, a set of additional IPs for outbound connections, and then to ensure that the NAT gateway is used for the cluster virtual machine agents and Packer virtual machines. When it's done, we will have plenty of outbound connections. Is there any question for this one? With network outbound for infra.ca. Um, I don't see other new issues. Do you? Looking. We have that issue from Bezel. I'm adding it. Oh, it's already on the new. Uh, OK, yeah, thanks, Mark. Mark told us that you will take over. Cool, and he already triaged it. I'm really happy with it. Thanks, Mark. Mark takes it. Work in the core packaging process. OK, I don't have anything else. Do you, folks? Yeah, we'll say hi to Varsha who just joined. Oh, or yeah. At least I see someone. Hi, Varsha. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, I don't think we have other inf Jenkins infrastructure topic here. If anyone wants to share, discuss something, that's your turn. Otherwise, uh, we can call it done. One, two, three. Okay, so then I release you all, folks. Anything else? Uh, any other topics? Okay, just to be sure. 
Thanks for attending. See you next week and have a nice end of day or full day for depending on where you are in the world. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you.